It's the biggest time of the gamer year. It's almost magical. Anticipation is high. Imagination runs wild. You're ready to tell all your friends about what you learned and what you saw. Yeah, it's E3 season. And so let's recount this year's festivities. Hi, my name's Alec. And this is Alec Who Gives a Hoot. That, that is like the worst idea I've I'm gonna do it. We're a year removed from E3, considering there was a whole pandemic, and so there was no E3 2020. But still, the year before, we had Keanu Reeves come out, and so, you know, there were high expectations, and some other games came out, but point is, there are high expectations. Kinda no games had really been hyped up to this point. Cyberpunk happened, and that kinda killed some hype. Nothing really big AAA had happened since then. And so you could see that a lot of people were anticipating a big event. And before this, a lot of companies had adapted to this whole digital presentation. You know, Ubisoft Forward, which we'll get to and start with, really paved a way for a lot of smaller companies. But then you saw things like, you know, Sony State of Play happens a lot. Xbox would have some press conferences. And at this point, we're so used to Nintendo Directs happening that whenever they announce it, you're like, oh, in two days, we're going to get to see the new Pokemon or something like that. And so a lot of companies have adapted, but there's still an audience to be captured that goes to these larger events that only watches this. And so with an all digital event, there are a lot of things to consider. If you wanted game announcements, you definitely got some. The quality of the announcements, you know, could have been better. But we'll get to that later. Before we get into anything else, I do want to let you know I'm going to go over some of the more larger conferences and peak points and just kind of skim over the top of them. So if I don't get in depth with their game, I'm sorry. I might do a video later on some of these, depending on how the news cycle is. And we can talk about that later. Hey, at any point, if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. I'm a little newer to the scene, so I'd appreciate it if you help me out. And maybe you can see the growth that I have in this. What's wrong with my hair? It started off with Jeff Keighley with the Summer Games Fest kickoff. It was good for the first bigger event, though it's not technically E3. We all kind of consider it part of the E3 season. It's this whole week. It's this whole thing, okay? No need for technicalities. It started with the Borderlands spinoff, the rumored and leaked Tiny Tina's Wonderland. And let me tell you, it wouldn't be the first time we would see it this week. From there, other cool events happened and games got announced. Like, Kojima personally drops in and talks to Jeff Keighley about it. And he announces the new Death Stranding Director's Cut, which has a cool reference to Metal Gear Solid. We get some other low games. It kind of lulls in the middle. You know, it feels like an average conference. Start with a banger and then you get something good. And then it happened. Jeff Keighley had been hyping this whole thing up all week. He'd been hyping it up and then even tweeting mid-show about you don't want to miss a finale. And then he announced it with as much hype as any player would. He had just as much to announce Elden Ring, the From Software, George R.R. R. Martin collaboration. And it looked as glorious as we all wanted it to be. The world building off the bat seemed great. These bosses, this lively world, it was everything we wanted. And then we even got a release date for January. I think something that was really cool is just how excited Jeff was. Jeff really felt like part of the community in that he had this presentation that, you know, really was just announcement after announcement, which is what we really wanted. Even if some of the announcements weren't as big, he had enthusiasm, he had guests. And it's something to show that going forward, Jeff Keighley, anything he announces can only get better. And all eyes are gonna be on any events he has. He already has the Game Awards. So it's only gonna get better and better. Maybe if E3 gets a showrunner for any types of things, he could be the guy to look at. Or maybe they just need a guy for this. But we'll get to maybe why that is later. So actual E3 wouldn't start for a few days, just two days later, and it launches with Ubisoft Forward. And at this point, Ubisoft has done a few of these events, and so they kind of have the gist of it, and it's not a bad kickoff. It launches with Rainbow Six getting their PvE experience and showing their three-player mode, which brings in the Siege characters, makes its own in-universe kind of thing. I think that's really cool. Good showings with Riders Republic and even Just Dance and Rocksmith with these smaller titles that they're known for, the things that help make them money for these bigger projects. It feels like a lull, but I think there was something for everybody in games like that. We see more of Far Cry, and we're gonna keep seeing more of Far Cry. And it's cool that they take a new path with Assassin's Creed with a roadmap and to support it another year, something they don't really do with their titles like that. So I think that's really cool. And then some people have been hoping for Star Wars, and we know some big announcement has to come at the end. It's the way these things go. And so there are rumors and talks about their new Star Wars game, but they show an engine for their new avatar game which looks beautiful i'm not about those games i wasn't really about the movie and so it came as a surprise but 
I think if the engine is as good as that, depending on how this game does, we can have high hopes for a Star Wars game. All around, it was a solid experience. Not the best, not bad by any means. If we had an average, I would say this is it. This was an average conference. But I just wish some of these smaller ones would be just as average. Once again, let's just keep up with the hype though. So something we'd all been waiting for, the one company that has stuck around with E3, made it its thing, Xbox, and now it was merged with Bethesda. Because you always watched the Xbox conference, you always watched the Bethesda conference, and they competed. Now they're going to be together. How are we going to do this? What's going to happen? Is anybody going to steal the show from another? Well, let me tell you, in my opinion, I think Xbox Bethesda stole the whole E3 show. It kicks off with Todd Howard coming out, talking about exclusivity, and finally seeing the new IP for Starfield with a release date for next year. It looked gorgeous. This was an in-engine trailer, and that was just really cool. And then the games just didn't end. 30 games got announced, 27 of which are going to be on Game Pass. You got Stalker, Back for Blood, Party Animals, Somerville. I didn't even know about half these games, and now I got really excited for them. And here's the interesting thing. Midway, they show Halo, announce it free multiplayer. The story already looks cooler than what they showed before, but that multiplayer looks like Halo. It looks fun. It looks strong. The direction they're taking with it, they said, you know what? We know why people like Halo, and that's just the midpoint at that point. Continuing on, we get Plague Tale, The Ascent, Forza, which looks absolutely beautiful. At some point, I'm watching the video, or at least what I thought was a video, when it was just in engine zoomed in how beautiful it looked. It won awards for best in show, but that's really only because Elden Ring's not there. But you could argue it would still win just how beautiful this game is. You get Arcane comes in, and Redfall, their new IP announced. It was everything you wanted. Once again, 27 out of 30 of these are going to be on Game Pass. That's insane. Microsoft has slowly been climbing up, and I think this is an announcement saying we are here. We're legit. We are premier experience. And I think they're doing great. For me, this was a 10 out of 10. So then you get to Square Enix, and it's more of a 50-50 how you felt about Square Enix. If you really like their games, you know, you really enjoyed this, but you're not really getting what... You're not really helping everybody in this. Let's see. It starts with the new Guardians game, which some people have a bad taste in their mouth from the Avengers game, even though it's made by different teams. So I, I don't really think that's fair. And it's a new take and it's a single player experience. So I hope that, you know, raises things up. But then Avengers did show up with more expansions, including Wakanda. So, you know, maybe there's hope for that. There's more Final Fantasy and we got to see the long awaited Babylon's Fall. Now with games like that, especially Strangers of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin, if those aren't your thing, you're not having any fun. You're just like more anime aesthetic, which I love, but I know not everybody does. And so you really might not have gotten much out of this. Babylon's Fall didn't look as great as we thought it would be. Now, maybe we'll get to see more of that. Strangers of Paradise, really cringy with its chaos meme, but you know, maybe that'll get out cooler because as the time of this, the demo's already out and everybody says the gameplay is better. If anime isn't for you, you may not have enjoyed this, but for some of us, it was great. That's why I say it's a 50-50 depending on who you ask. From there, our last heavy hitter, in my opinion, was the long-awaited Nintendo event and some long-awaited announcements were made. Of course, it had to open with Ganondorf and so you're thinking, oh, no, Breath of the Wild, we got it. But then he gets thrown into lava by the newest Smash character, Kazuya from Tekken. So with that, a lot of people weren't going to be happy. Some people were. I think it's a cool idea because they really are paying homages to the other games in the fighting genre. But you're never going to make anyone happy with all the Nintendo announcements. Then we also saw the return of the Prodigal series, Metroid Dread. The long rumors, the long wait. It is finally here, a new Metroid game. Metroid Fusion, where are you? Who knows? And then you get some other smaller titles, which is really cool. It made Mario Golf look awesome. And so you just had some fun. Advance Wars came back. It really showed that Nintendo has this ability to really look in their back pockets and be like, what series are people still longing and waiting for? We're getting towards the end and it's like, man, what are they going to show? And there it is with a cinematic, with a bionic arm, long-haired hero landing in the sky version of Hyrule. We finally got more info on the sequel to Breath of the Wild. It was the banger ending only Nintendo could deliver. Nintendo took 45 minutes and put in a lot of content. And once again, it was just scratching the surface of the games they had. With the announcement of Advance Wars, you realize they could really do anything they want. With the Breath of the Wild sequel, you know that people are craving different and different games. I didn't even mention how a Mario Rabbids sequel is happening, which was announced. Actually, hold on, let me back it up. Ubisoft was going to announce it, and Nintendo 
basically leaked it before Ubisoft got to announce it, but we got to see more of it here. It was just crazy. There's so much happening. But that just shows you the catalog and that Nintendo does know what it's doing. Of course, I can't go into every single game, but those are some of my highlights or some of the bigger ones that, you know, most people would know. But with highs come lows. And let me tell you, the lows were pretty low. We had some other larger developers show up, but they really just kind of embarrassed themselves and really put a damper on some of the E3 moods. Like I mentioned before, Square was 50-50. I enjoyed it personally, but I get why some wouldn't. Capcom appears, and I kind of feel like this was the could have been an email of all of E3, that they just do these three more major announcements that Resident Evil Village is getting a DLC. The game just came out. We're fine. Let the game be out. We got the Monster Hunter spinoffs. That could have just been a tweet you know, because I think we already know those are coming. And then for me, I love the Ace Attorney series, but most people watching E3 aren't going to care about the Ace Attorney series. That was your finisher, and it had gameplay demonstrations. As a lover of the series, I can at least say to a general audience, that doesn't look super fun. None of this required a whole show, in my opinion. A blog or a YouTube video on its own would have been just as effective. That way, you're not alienating others out of your products. New to the E3 scene was Koch, Koch, Coach, Kai? I'm not going to say, how do you even say it? Because they even say it differently during their show. And about that show was maybe one minute of gameplay for the whole show, which was like an hour. They sat devs down and talk, which has its place, but not at an E3 and not at a time like this. No one was wanting this at all. Big F. And then you get these long-winded presentations with a PC Gaming Show and Future Games Fest. PC Gaming Show had this weird cringy skit that was happening and you really just kind of wanted to get back to the games, which even then you kind of didn't care about. So in a way it like worked because you were like, I need a break from the monotony. But then the was your break, you're like, I kind of want the monotony back. I mean, props to them for trying to be creative, but really I just feel like I was in shambles. Chat was dying the whole time. At least Future Games had, you know, Laura Bailey and Troy Baker as their co-hosts, and that was fun. But we got a lot of repeats of other indies that we've already seen at this point. And so it just becomes a slog of games in your face, and you're not really enjoying yourself anymore because you're, like, maybe seeing one or two bangers in there. But overall, you're just like, why am I still here? I know some outlets didn't even cover it, and I don't blame them. Now, don't get me wrong, indies deserve their place. There are some cool indies out there that I saw. Like Lake, this beautiful, serene, relaxing game was probably one of my most hyped games after this conference. You get things like Sable, which every time you saw it felt really cool. But some of these games you see three or four times and it's just not fun anymore and it kills interest. You're almost just like, there it is again. And now every time you see that game, you're going to associate it with the time you're sitting in your chair dying. But past all that, I think the most egregious presentation, in my opinion, was Gearbox. Ooh, ooh, Gearbox. Gearbox is a good developer. They should know what this show is. They should know how to knock this out of the park. They're Gearbox. They're fun. So why was this the least fun thing of all? Mixed with a disappointment and the actual content we got this was terrible all right let me get why we got randy pitchford right off the bat right there i, I could probably just grade it like an f right here and you'd all understand but you know what it, i'm not even gonna roast randy like this gearbox has randy running around the set for their movie so maybe we're gonna get some movie stuff no they blur out Kate blanchett so we don't even get to see that much of the costume he talks to all these behind the scenes people that like being behind the scenes and don't really want to talk to him or anyone and so it's just kind of awkward interactions there and he's like ah it's kind of like you know whenever your uncle like grabs you or your grandparent is just like ah let me t show you to my friends and you're just like hey that's what it felt like okay and then they also have the stuff with gearbox university which is i'm trying to be funny and i see the humor but it really fell flat and then we're seeing the stuff about homeworld 3 scattered throughout we're not talking about the game we're just showing you like five to ten second clips so you get randy and then you get homeworld and then you get gearbox to you and then you get a sprinkle of a game and you're just like what is happening here just bizarre decisions are happening it's not funny it's not fun so what is going on? Oh, what games did they show? The same Wonderland trailer. No new gameplay, not a new trailer. We watched the exact same trailer. Absolutely ridiculous. Tribes of Midgard, we'd already seen. Give me something new. Godfall? Godfall looks cool, don't get me wrong, but it's failing. And bring it to PS4 might be the best move, but you know most people watching aren't caring and they won't jump into it. You know why? Because they've heard Godfall sucked. 
So it's just not working. Awesome for you, Godfall people. I'm happy for you, though. So as much as I can gush on the great, I have to be fair about the lows. And that's maybe with all these indie kind of showcases, which there's a main indie showcase, which does great. So I don't know why these fell flat. There's less good content, less things to note. And just more and more and more indie. And you know, here's the thing. There were winners. There's the cool concept of dungeon running with Phantom Abyss. A game where only one person can complete a generated dungeon. And it's locked away forever. A leaderboard of one. Kina, Bridge of Spirits just looks adorable. And the music made me relax. Once again, Lake is going to be a day one purchase for me. They have their time. But when you have about 30, 40 of them in a row in your face. And you're just dying middle of the day. You don't really get excited to see them. And I'm really hurting. And I really hope these games get a chance, but I hope they don't die just because they're part of the slog. So let's take it all in. We had big hits like Halo and Breath of the Wild to smaller hits like Lake and Sable. Average in the middle announcements like Mario Rabbids and Riders Republic. Then let's call it filler because it kind of felt that way. On a year out of COVID, it was something long awaited and it was digital only. And the digital only may be the crux that can make me say this really was just okay let me be honest without nintendo or xbox this event is nothing and this could have been the last e3 it's a blip and the last we hear about it period it's done take away xbox i don't think even nintendo salvages it because there was stuff for everyone but also kind of not outside of them maybe ubisoft made you happy so outside of the biggest announcements you really didn't care about these middle fillers which i guess is kind of the point you just find yourself saying that's cool i won't play it and then you just get back on your phone there's a reason a lot of companies have pulled out sony state of play has an agenda it gets it done and it's awesome ea play is its own event happening later this summer and they know exactly what they're going to be doing there xbox even has their own venue and they did their extended games showcase and so really they don't need e3 i think they're just taking advantage of the fact sony's not there is the only reason and they're like we can conquer you know the news cycle for a little bit part of the reason e3 kind of felt weird is maybe kind of how great summer games fest was was it amazing no but it wasn't bad and it's relatively newer it gets grace for that jeff Keeley put on a show that's what this is really it's a show now it used to maybe be for developers and all these investors, but now it's a show, and that's what people have come to expect from it. Jeff Keighley gave us game after game, and he was in it. He was excited. Also, I think the host for the digital format was cool, and I want them to incorporate that because I think they were just as excited. It was just the actual presentations. So you got to find this mix. you got to find this balance. The biggest game from the weekend was Elden Ring, and it technically wasn't even at E3. So really... It's kind of weird. My favorite part of E3 was what came before it at Summer Games Fest. I love E3. I remember waking up early during my summer vacation to watch vloggers and different influencers before they were called influencers go over the show floor, show me games, look at demos, play the games and talk to me about it. And that's kind of what I decided my holiday, you know, game list was going to be. There's still an air, there's still emotion when you hear the words E3 and I don't want it to die, but I don't want it to be in the state it's in now. So how do they recover? I really don't have all the answers. You know, as long as they keep some of the bigger names like Xbox and Nintendo, there's still going to be a way for it. I really think they need a showrunner, someone like a Jeff Keighley, if not him, to really kind of sit down and say, this is what it is. You need someone to curate. You need someone to look over the plans for presentation and be like, hey, this is not going to work. Hey, do this instead. Can you show me something else? Someone that knows at the end of the day, it's about the entertainment. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have the wrong idea of what E3 should be, but I think that's what you get. So that way people are more excited. People get hyped. For now, they're coasting off the name, but you need someone that can look at Xbox and be like, this is perfect. And then look at Gearbox and be like, get this out of my face right now. Maybe going back in person is what it's going to be. Just hearing people cheer might make all the difference, you know, but I don't know how many people want to cheer on all these indie games, but maybe they'll play them on the floor showcase. And so, you know, maybe when we return to that kind of scene, that's what can happen. I will say it was nice to hear a lot of games coming out. It was really fun. I really enjoyed getting, talking to people, going into forums for games I did enjoy. That's the power of E3. That's the power of games that for a week, for a moment, gamers, no matter what you like, MMOs, MOBAs, first person shooters, come together to see what is happening and what's new. That you're with like-minded people celebrating your one big passion in entertainment, games. And so that's why I want E3 to stay. E3 was just okay this year. 
But sometimes you're going to go through that. I hope E3 gets better as we go along. Sorry I didn't get super in-depth in a lot of games. I really just wanted to talk about E3 and kind of what my experience was. Let me know in the comments what you thought of E3 as a whole or what you want to see from some of the industry going forward. Once again, if you like this video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. And I hope to see you again in the future. My name's Alec. Thanks for watching.